let's get started. So the Lego movies. I'm super excited about the Lego movies. I saw the last one two years ago when it came out. I loved it so much. I saw it twice in the theater. I cried during it. It was like really meta and like totally relevant to my life and things that were going on in my life. Uh, I still kind of want to do a wild style cosplay. It's a whole thing. So when I heard they were doing Lego Batman, I got really excited um, because I love what they did with the last one. So it's like, yes, like let them do Batman, you know? And Batman was in the last Lego movie and Will Arnett is so great as the voice of Batman. I mean, he's so perfectly cast. I love Lego's take on Batman and how he's like this kind of emo, EDM loving, like crazy man who just thinks he's like the coolest guy ever, you know? <laughs> like, and that's so perfect for Will Arnett because he's just like so, like he plays that lovable asshole who's just like so full of himself, but like you still kind of like him anyways and he's charming in a certain way. So yeah, I've been looking forward to this movie for a long time. Uh, it blew my socks off. Like, I was, it was everything I wanted and more out of a Lego Batman movie. They did not disappoint me on any level. Uh, I think that this is the best DC movie that's come out since, like, The Dark Knight. So what's it about? Lego Batman is all about relationships, and that is why I love this movie. It's all about Bruce Wayne and Batman's personal relationships with the people in his life, the city, his villains, everything. And it explores the idea that because Batman lost his parents and he was orphaned at a young age, Ever since then, he has pushed other people away in order to protect himself from ever having to relive that pain by having anyone else ever be taken from him, okay? Like, he's so scared to let somebody in because he doesn't want to lose them because it's so painful, right? But because of that, like, no man is an island. Like, they even make that joke. It's just like, no man is an island. And, like, he, he does have a family, and he has to, like, he needs help. Everybody needs help. Nobody can do it on their own. And also, whether he wants to admit it or not, he does have relationships with these other people, you know, whether it's Alfred. Alfred may not be his actual biological father, but he is his father, but like he doesn't act like it. The main relationship crux of the plot is really between Batman and the Joker and how Batman doesn't ever appreciate the Joker and like make him feel special. And like, he just won't admit that he's his number one villain. And it was just like, and it hurts Joker's feelings. He's like, I fucking made you. Like, I push you to be the best as you can be. And you can't even like give me anything in return. You can't even say I'm your number one villain. It's so great. It really goes into like this weird boyfriend, girlfriend, messed up toxic relationship that they have. And the end of the movie is all about Batman finally letting people into his life, starting the Bat family, uh, and also, you know, fixing things with Joker, you know, like it's a whole, and the rest of his villains too. Speaking of the villains, I loved seeing so many villains in this. I mean, like every Batman villain that you can think of is in this. I love that there's no backstory. There's no, we don't have to explain where they came from. It's just like, you know who the Scarecrow is. You know who Clayface is. They're just in it and it's fun. You know, they're not worried about people who don't know anything about Batman. But the thing that's great about this movie is that you can appreciate it no matter how much you know or don't know about Batman. This movie is made for people who have never, have no idea about Batman, you can enjoy it. Or if you've read and seen every single thing about Batman, you can enjoy it. It references Batman through the ages, through the 60s, through the 80s, the movies, the television shows, the comic books. I love that Lego Batman even included like all of these super obscure villains that like you would only know if you've read some of like the more goofier stories from the comics. I fucking died when I saw Gentleman Ghost. I was like, I cannot believe they put Gentleman Ghost. And it's hilarious. They also reference Catman, who I just found out about out through Super Weird Heroes. It's this awesome book from IDW and Yo Comics. And it talks about all these like really obscure, like goofy superheroes. And Catman is totally in this shit, man. Catman and the kitten, okay? Like this is hilarious. In fact, you should just check out this whole book. Like I'm sure there's more people in here that's in Lego Batman, surprisingly. I also really enjoy the Robin character a lot. We see him adopting Robin and that was just like adorable. One of my favorite scenes is where, you know, Robin, he's in his new costume and he has this sparkly cape on and he's hanging out with Batman and they're going on their adventure, their first adventure and Batman's trying to show him the ropes and he's like, you gotta hide in the darkness. You know, you gotta blend in with the shadows. And every time, Robin tries to blend in in a shadow, like his sparkly cape just catches the light and just like sparkles fly everywhere. And it's just like, 
hilarious. Like, it's so not his style, and it's adorable. Like, I thought that Robin was really fantastic. Uh, I love to see Barbara Gordon. She was in this, and now she's the commissioner. So she's just like, Batman, we got to work together. We got to do something that's a little more effective, because all you're doing is just like, these people get away, and nothing ever changes, and it's just the same shit over and over again, and really this is just your playground, and this really isn't, Gotham isn't your playground. Gotham is a city where people live, so we need to kind of figure it out together. And there's one scene in particular where, you know, Batman, he thinks he's so cool, you know, he's just like, doesn't want Barbara to fly the, the bat jet around or whatever, so he like puts a rope in charge and like ties it, and then like hops out. And he's like, no, the rope's in charge, you know? Like, don't touch it, it's the rope, you know? And, and then eventually she's just like, fuck this rope. And she just gets the rope off and then just starts driving that thing. And I thought that that was one of the best things to say to girls, like little girls out there is fuck the rope, okay? Some dude's gonna put a rope on some controls for you. And you know what? Just take it off and just, if you're competent, you know what the fuck you're doing and people need your help, then you just have to take charge and you can't wait for permission. You gotta do it if you know what you're doing. You know, it's nice to see the DC universe having a little bit of fun for a change because that's what comics are about, you know? Like they are colorful, they are fun, they are goofy. It's okay to embrace that. That is what gives me joy. Like that's why I love comic books is because they're fun, not because they're dark and whatever the fuck. Really well done, Lego people. Like you did it again, Lego, you did it again. Look guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. I cried like five times watching this movie. Like I cried a lot watching this movie. I was also a little bit stoned and I've also been having a really hard time lately. And it also just perfectly hit the nail on the head for like super relevant issues in my life. You think I'm Batman? I'm not fucking Batman in this equation, okay? Like I feel like Barbara and the Joker and Robin and Alfred, okay? Like I'm one of them like all rolled into one. And like, it was so amazing. Like this one scene in particular, it was just like, it, it was like laughing and it was just so perfect where you have the Joker and he's sitting there on the couch. And this is after Batman has said like, I don't need you. I don't care about you. You mean nothing to me. You know, he says this horrible shit to Joker. And Joker's sitting there and he's watching Superman on the TV and Superman's being interviewed about Zod and how, you know, he just put Zod in the phantom zone. And Superman's talking about Zod like, you know, Zod's like my greatest villain. I wouldn't be who I am today without him. And I'm so glad that he was my villain and I, he was so bad, I just had to put him in the phantom zone. And like, Joker's like, you see, Superman gets it. He gets it. Like, it's just, ah, uh, it's so great. Like, it's a really perfect movie for people who may feel a little underappreciated in their lives for all the things they do for the Batman in their life. Surprisingly, the goofy ass Lego Batman movie is the movie that really explores the pain that Batman feels from being orphaned, like more so than any other Batman film that I've ever seen. And I think the reason they're able to do this is because it is so comedic, like it is a comedy, it's supposed to be fun. So like they have all this fun stuff going on in there to balance out like talking about the real shit, like talking about what it's like to lose your family, you know, what it's like to be orphaned and to have people die and how that will make you weary of letting any other person into your life because you will be afraid of feeling that pain over again. And there's so much stuff in the, and not just this movie, in all the Lego movies, even the ninja one that's coming out, there's a lot of stuff about father-son relationships that I think is really cool. A lot of people out there have problems with their dads, you know, and this is a really great way for, you know, both parents and children to explore these ideas safely with one another. And hopefully this movie can kind of teach them some things so that they'll be, you know, they can heal their relationship. Well, it's interesting because with Batman, you know, he did lose his dad, but then Alfred essentially became his surrogate father and raised him. But like Batman never calls him dad. Like Batman has never, to my knowledge, you know, acknowledged him as his father. You know, it's always kind of been weird. Like, oh, he's just his butler, you know? When it's like, no, he's really his fucking dad. And the same thing with Robin about how they're like, oh, you know, Bruce Wayne is the ward, you know? And it's like, no, he's really his fucking dad, you know? Like, he should be Robin's dad. And Alfred even brings that up in the movie. He's like, you need to be a father to your son, you know? Like, because it's weird if he's not your son, you know? I love that they brought that up. They're like, you have to call him your son because your relationship with this kid is fucking weird unless you acknowledge that. And that's like so true. Out of all the bazillion characters in this movie, I have to say that the Joker was my favorite. Maybe it's just because I have green hair now. I don't know, but I really related to him a lot. 
I've definitely been in that position more than once where you're just like, acknowledge me or I'm gonna blow all of this up. I will fucking blow this up, you motherfucker, you know? Just like, ah, like, it's so good. It's so relatable and I think a lot of other ladies out there probably know what I'm talking about. And another thing about Barbara Gordon that I liked is the fact that, you know, she represents the other, you know, like she, like Batman is the one and I'm the one who's gonna do all this, but she represents like the rest of the town and like everybody else. And she's also kind of the voice of reason. And it's like, hey, I understand that you're cool and you're awesome and you love being the hero and riding in with your guns blazing, but you know, maybe we should kind of like talk about things and figure things out together and work things out together and work together, you know? And that's, that's the main thing that I think a lot of people want to see is just like, everybody, let's just work together. You just got to communicate and you got to appreciate one another and see each other's talents for what they are. Everybody's got different talents uh, that we can all utilize and help save all of us with, you know, because seriously, no man is an island, you know, like we do have to work together. Like it is a thing. It's true. We should do that. It's a really great message. It's nice to see this message, especially in our current climate of like us versus them, you know, everybody's, it's divide and conquer right now out there. I mean, it's just, it's madness, you know? It's just like, everybody hates everybody. Uh, you know, you did this, you're the problem. And it's just, it's, it's classic divide and conquer tactics that's going on right now. So I think that working together is a really great thing to point out right now. And I hope that people, you know, it maybe seeps into their subconscious and makes them want to look at the other and not see them as an other, but see them as an ally, you know, instead of an enemy. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, everybody's got their role. Everybody has their place, you know? Barbara doesn't want to be Batman, you know? Alfred doesn't want to be Batman. Like, they want to be themselves, but they also, you know, want to help. Because, you know, at the end of the day, Batman is still really awesome. Him having a family doesn't take away from who he is, it doesn't take away from his accomplishments, you know, it doesn't take away from like all the crazy awesome sick shit that he can do, you know, it's just like, but you just get extra help because you're gonna need it because life's fucking crazy and it throws some fucked up shit at you and you can't do everything alone. Go see Lego Batman because not only did it make me cry real tears and help me to kind of talk about some issues with certain people, uh, it also made me laugh, like, a lot. I laughed. I was just so happy to see all these fun characters going willy-nilly, having a good time. So, in short, I totally, absolutely adore Lego Batman. I'm going to buy it on Blu-ray. I might go see it again in the theater. Uh, and I hope you guys liked our new set. We just put it together today. Uh, you're going to be seeing a lot more of this little vlog set. Uh, we're going to be doing some, some shorter videos like this to just help keep things coming out while Tyson's working on our larger videos, director T-Bone. Uh, and yeah, I'd like to thank some of my super patrons out there, David Mina, Blue Dog, and Andrew Mancata. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And on Instagram, I've been doing a lot of weird live Instagram stuff lately, so maybe you should follow me on there because you never know. It's usually in the middle of the night that I'll get on there and talk to people for like right before my sleeping pills kick in so I can go to sleep because I have insomnia and I have a problem. I I've totally, I say a lot of stuff on there I probably shouldn't be saying, but you know, they just pops away and nobody ever sees it again. So.